which now I can play with with different colors. If I hit this button, it creates a cube. If I now hit this button, it creates a mash network out of that cube, which I can now do ridiculously cool stuff with. So you can make it very easy to select complex sections of your character. You can even create an entire world and generate it at the push of a button. What's up everyone, welcome back to How to Become an Animator. I'm Sir Wade and today we are back with another Tech Tuesday with some awesome gear to review. For any of you artists out there looking for new gear to speed up your workflow. We have an awesome tech review today with something called Palette. Now I first discovered this company when I was just scrolling through Instagram. Normally when I see a sponsored post, I just swipe past it, they're not usually interesting. But in this particular case, I saw all these little module blocks being stuck together in really cool configurations. And people were using these with all the Adobe software, Lightroom, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, After Effects, all that kind of stuff. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. But anyways, they sent me their professional kit to review, which is their biggest pack. It comes with four buttons, six dials, four sliders, and one core. Core is this one here. And it's pretty much the brain that controls the whole system. So let's get this part out of the way. This is not an ad. They're not paying me to say this, nothing like that. They sent it to me to review, to check out for my own workflow. And I love it. So I want to share it with you guys. Now, what I don't want this video to be is, yeah, they feel really nice in the hand and they, they have a really strong build quality. They do, and they do feel nice, but that's not what I want this video to be. I want to show you a hands-on demo of how these work, how to use them, different things they can do. In Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere, and although they're meant to be used mainly with the Adobe software and then certain other tools, I found a way to use them in really great ways with Maya. So I'll show you some tips for using these things with Maya as well. What's really cool about them is that you can use them with any keyboard combination in any program. So quickly, let me just give you an example of what some of these things are. So like I said, we have the brain, this is the core, and this controls all the different apps and the software. This is a slider, it has a very smooth travel and clicks. So you get a button press as well as left and right directions. Next, we have the slider. Pretty much what you'd expect, it is a slider. You can go up and down or horizontally. Last but not least, in fact, this is my favorite, are these buttons. These are my favorites because these are pretty much the exact same buttons you'd find on an arcade video game, which just makes it a lot of fun to use when you're working. I liked them so much, in fact, that I decided that the Pro Kit didn't have enough, and I was talking to the company just saying how much I love these, and they actually sent me four additional buttons just because I liked them so much. So thank you so much, Palette. I really appreciate it. And again, no one's being paid to do any of this. I just want to shout out how awesome they are. Their customer service, they're so willing to listen. They're a super nice company, great people. So I'm super stoked to support them and hope you guys are up for trying something like this because it's a lot of fun and it really can improve your workflow if you like this kind of stuff, which I do. Now, before we go to the next setup here, let me just show you, I have a bunch of these things now. Ta-da! These things are awesome. You can put them in different configurations. So now let's go do some demos. All right, so here we are at my desk. Here are all of my components scattered around. And all you need to do is open up the Palette Gear software. They make it super easy. You pick whatever software you're gonna be working in. You can do all the Adobe stuff here. Um, there are several other programs that this supports. And if you don't see something listed here, you can still make it work with keyboard shortcuts. These programs all just have specific actions built in that you can match these buttons, dials, and sliders to. Also, as you can see here, all of the buttons are customizable in color and in function. And you can also have your colors mapped per program. So you can have a blue one for Photoshop, purple for Premiere. Varied colors for whatever you want. And it's super easy to switch between profiles. In fact, most of the time, people just use a button to switch between profiles. All we need to do is add a button, select the button in the software, go to function switching, and we tell it just to go to next profile. Now, what's also really cool is if you have this checked, if you're in Photoshop, you just keep hitting this button. It'll just take you to all your Photoshop profiles and it'll skip over other softwares. Just for the demo though, I'll just show you what it looks like without that. Super easy. One last really cool thing I should point out is that if you do create a new profile for any application, such as Photoshop, you can actually load different users' quick start profiles that people upload to the community forum. So if you have your own workflow, you can upload it here. Or if you're looking for workflows, you can try other people's through these menus. So if you're someone who does a lot of retouching and you only have the starter kit, this would be a great to try, expert and professional level kits. These are each of the different sizes of the kits that you can buy right out of the box. Or of course, you could build your own. So let's say for art and design professional kit, Whoever created this profile uses these functions with these buttons, sliders, and dials in these colors. If I want to add a function, for example, this button has nothing attached to it, I'll select that. It'll pull up the button settings and I can choose from all these different things within Photoshop to make that button do. If you're really advanced in Photoshop and you use actions, you can really do anything with these combinations. For the rest of us, you can do different adjustment layers with the press of a button, different brush settings, colors, undo and redos, and much, much more. In my case, I like to have one for a new layer, and I'm going to choose new layer with no dialogue so that it happens faster. And if I don't want it to be red, I can choose a new color and I'm good to go. So now I can go into Photoshop, I can use my slider for brush size, a button to switch colors, and I can go to work. And if you don't like the position of this, you can always move it out of the way. So I showed you my brush tool. I also have an eraser tool button, and if that's too slow, I can just bump up the size and make that smaller again. Now what's really cool is when you use these sliders for color control. So if we watch the top right corner of the screen, we have this color palette. We can use this slider to adjust the hue. So let's say I'm going for a nice sky blue. This is my saturation and this is my luminance. So a combination of slider controls gives me the color I want. A twirl of the dial gives me the brush size. And now we have some puffy clouds in the sky. A lot of you guys ask me if you need to be a good artist to be an animator. 
Obviously the answer is no, I'm a much better animator than I am traditional artist. We hit our new button to create a new layer. It takes a bit to get used to a new tool like this, especially when you're so used to using the same hotkeys all the time. It is a lot more fun to use something like this and a lot faster once you get the hang of it. Now I don't use Photoshop as often as probably a lot of you guys do. I don't draw nearly as much as I should. I just use it for very specific things. Now Premiere on the other hand, I use all the time. Now I don't know if you guys saw my YLF DreamWorks video. If you haven't, please check it out. It's one of my favorites. Let me show you an example here that if you wanna just do a keyboard shortcut, you just hit the shortcut, set a name, and you're good to go. So I'll show you a little bit of how I edit using palette. I'll watch what I have. Today is my final day at DreamWorks Animation. I like that edit point, so I'm gonna say slice, I'll grab those, and delete. Now I already have my music picked out because I've already done this video, so I'm just gonna drag this over here and lock it so I don't accidentally slice it. That way I can edit to the music. Today is my final day at DreamWorks Animation. I have this slider to zoom in and out, and I'll just close some of these gaps real quick. Delete, delete, slice, delete. I wish I could show you this better, but my computer is having a hard time keeping up with everything that's going on. I need to upgrade. So I'll show you guys how I do this. Normally I'll take a clip, I'll kind of edit by audio, so I'll take my audio clips. I have the in-camera audio, and I have my good mic audio, and I'll play through with the buttons and slice and delete all of these different blocks on the palette. Delete is if I'm making cuts knowing that I'm probably gonna delete that chunk, that chunk. <laughs> That chunk there, delete and delete. I'll take that and delete that and that. And then what I can do is I can jump between all these edit points really easily with my dials so I can see what I like about the audio. I boiled down what I really wanted out of this year to three things. I wanted to create, learn, and teach. I boiled down all the things I like to do the most. I found the three things I'm the most. So that one was a retake. I boiled down all the things I like to do the most. I found the three things I'm the most passionate about. I like to create, I like to learn, and I like to teach. Which really worked out as a trainer or as teaching. Great. So here I'd zoom in a little bit more, slice that, slice that, and I would delete in between so that there's not so much of a pause. Teach, which really worked out. Perfect. So I'll jump over to After Effects for a minute. I have a button to create a composition. Another button set to create solids. I have a button to set keyframes. So if I wanna hold this for a while, I hit that button, move over here, make another change. Now here's a cool combo. I have a button for an adjustment layer, which I'll apply some color to, and I'll tweak this to look more like fire. And then I can dial this up or down with this layer slider to get more of a washed out look or bring it back up here and a slider to zoom around if I wanna check the detailing and say like, well, I need a little bit more detail in this to up the complexity. You can see before and after. See that I added a little bit more flame there. Then what gets really helpful in big projects is I have a dial to help me select different layers. So if I have 30 different layers, I can just cycle through them really quickly with one dial. And I can make a new solid if I would like to. A slider here for transparency so I can see what I'm doing. And then here, if for some reason I were trying to make my hand glow, and I can go ahead and bring that back up. I'm not gonna be using this, so I will hide the layer. I'll put it on a duplicate copy of the video file, add a shine effect to that, which now I can play with, with different colors. And then I can take that original mask and adjust its feather with this dial again. That way I get a slightly more natural fall off. Now if I wanna dial that back again, I can just use this layer slider to fade it out and bring it back up. Now when it comes to using Maya, I only use a few modules. So to make this work with Maya in really cool ways, all you need to do is make a new profile, and then you just have palette, which shortcuts you wanna map. So for example, if you wanna set a key, you hit S. Most of us know that, so check this out. If I hit this button, it creates a cube and puts it above origin. If I now hit this button, it creates a mesh network out of that cube, which I can now do ridiculously cool stuff with. And just like that, we've made something kinda cool. So now if I hit the next button, it creates a sphere in the middle of my scene, which I can push a button to set a key on, move it back through the tunnel. If I wanted, I could have a button to make this play. I could even have a button to activate scale, translate, rotate, all that kind of stuff, but for now, we can see this cube move. What can be really useful when you have a character is that if you wanna select a certain set of parts, for example, the entire right arm, all the fingers, normally you have to go and select all of those. But if you create your own selection sets, you can set them to different buttons so that you can key them with ease, toggle that, switch to the left arm, and keep working. So you can make it very easy to select complex sections of your character. And if you wanna get crazy with it, you can even create an entire world and generate it at the push of a button. I have definitely done something wrong because they're not supposed to be giant floating donuts, but in theory, this was supposed to be a street with a car, a building, a sidewalk, the road, and a street lamp. But I think you got what I was going for. With one button press, you can switch tools, grab parts of your character, or generate geometry you've created all within seconds. Anyway, I hope it gives you some cool ideas of what you can do with palette. So some other info, because it's hard to tell on camera, but these things are a really good metal. Like I wouldn't be worried if I dropped these while traveling and I do bring them with me while traveling, at least a few of them. But I grab four or five of them just to throw in my backpack for when I'm on the go. And if I were to drop them, I wouldn't be that worried because they are pretty sturdy. They have these rubber grips on the back. So when they go on your desk, they usually stay there. They don't slide around, which is nice. And in case you can't tell, the connections are magnetic. 
So it's super easy to connect them in whatever ways you want. That's what the plugs look like and they just snap into place. If you do want to pick these up, there are three pre-built kits that you could buy and get, you know, the ones that it comes with, or you could just pick your own modules from scratch. What you see here would be considered the starter kit at $200. Everything here is considered the expert kit at $299, and all of this is the professional kit at $499. Now, if you're concerned about price, I can understand these sounding a bit high. Don't forget, you can also build your own from scratch and just pay what you want to pay. And it's hard to know from looking at these in a video whether it's worth the cost, but when you're kind of holding them in your hands and you're using them every day, and you understand what they do, how much they can do, and the quality of what you're buying, these aren't just toys and gadgets. These are professional grade equipment that you can add to your arsenal of tools. Now, if this sounds a little pricey, I totally understand if it's a bit above your budget, but I do recommend if you can swing it, pick up a couple of the modules. They're really awesome and I'm really having a great time with them. So if you're someone who likes to push buttons and knobs and stuff rather than just sitting and clicking on the screen, this is a lot of fun and it can really speed you up. So it is just something to consider. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you saw some cool stuff in the workflow, different ideas for you to try yourself with or without these tools. I figured it'd be cool to do a little taste of software and hardware just to see some different possibilities to get you excited. And again, huge thanks to Palette for sending me all this stuff. I really appreciate it. I've been having a ton of fun with this stuff. And if you guys want to pick up any of this gear, I'll link everything down below. Do you guys like Tech Tuesdays? Let me know down below if this is something we should keep doing. I'm having a good time with it and I love talking about tech. So if you're into it, let me know down below and we'll keep doing it. And also drop some suggestions of what you might like to see or if there's anything you've been wondering about or struggling in your workflow. We'll check out some different tech and try to find some cool solutions. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you don't want to miss out on the new uploads, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I post something. Now, I'll see you guys in the next video.